Right, I was asked to um, make a video to, this, to explain how um, this works. It's used for putting your bearings in and taking them back out again. Makes life much easier. Uh, that's got a bearing on it which makes it easy to turn even when it's tight which is really useful and each of these have got this shoulder on them which rests inside the bearing and holds it in line so show you how to put a drive bearing in first so you've got to find the one that's the right size that's obviously it's a it's not quite as wide as the bearing obviously and most of the weight is on the edge which is where you want it because if you want it in the middle it's going to wreck the um, wreck the bearing so anyway get that stick that lined up where the bearing is going to go then it makes no odds which way around this goes, I'm going to use it that way around. So I'm, going to put, I'm going to leave that on the end as well. And then I'm going to put that on the end. And then you put that through. Then put that on the end of the bearing. Then wind your nuts on. So get it lined up see what it looks like so you know when it's resting in right because the edge of that rests in the right position so all you need is two 24mm sockets and we'll try and fit this bearing notice I haven't um, warm the engine casing up at all which is useful if you do so anyway winding it in always winding the nut end because that's the end that's got the bearing on makes it easy to turn it when it locks up the bearing should be in so we'll undo it take that one out roll the case over and there's your bearing in really easy now I'll explain how to take it out this piece is made wide enough that any of the bearings will fit inside that. Now, when you're taking it out, that goes this side. Use one of them to centralise the middle of that. Then, on this case, because this is one of the older TC cases, it hasn't got the um, the plate here. On the new ones, you can use that one again to push the bearing out. But as if you're going to take one of the bearings out anyway, it's more likely because it's knackered. So in this case, I'm going to be using it in the middle. Which means you'd use that one. So, um, where's that going? So put that on there, that through there. Oops, I need one of them once, all right. That through there. I'm oh, doing this the wrong way around. Idiots. Right, I'm going to go through that into the bearing that on the other side get 
innocent. Make sure it's in centralized properly. It helps to pull the bearing out nice and straight. So that's lined up. That's on the other side. Get your spanners on again. We sockets. Tighten up again and it pulls the bearing out. Really easy to use. Again, always try to turn the end that's got the bearing on. From the nut. That's nearly eight, it's coming quite loose. I will go all the way with it though. So, it's out now. It's all out, and there's your bearing. Take that off. There's your bearing, undamaged. That's the drive bearing. Um, right, so, crank. The end of this has a smaller thread there which fits into the crank there. So get your crank in. And it resolves away. Right, then you get this piece, one the nut onto there. Which takes forever if you're turning that bit because you're just turning the bearing. Make sure you hold it there. So, wind that on, stick any one of them on, put that on, get the crank in the middle of the bearing, wind this into the crank, Now inside the crank, get the crank lined up in the bearing, then tighten this, make sure it's in the middle of that there. Tighten that up, then you need a spanner, which I haven't got in there, I'll go and get one. Right, so you need a spanner on that nut, and one on this nut. And then just tighten that nut in and it pulls the crank in to the bearing. Fairly easy. Now I'm not going to pull that all the way in because this case isn't staying together like this. I'm only making those up for this video so I'm going to take that off. Just to show you that it has started to pull the crank in at like that. 
yeah so as you can see it's on its way in not going to take it away in. well then next we're going to do the uh, rear up bearing so find the one that matches it which on this one it really doesn't matter if it's larger because it only goes up to that anyway when you're taking it out you use that one so press that into there again I haven't warmed the casing up it's a lot easier if you warm it up it's a lot easier for the bearing to sit but we'll soldier on right so That through there, that through there, bearing onto there so it's sitting inside, that inside the bearing, put the nuts on, just check it's sitting inside before we start tightening it up and check that that's pretty central which it is then again just tighten it in just tighten that in like that easy it's going in then show how to take it out oops a dozer need to loosen it a bit first Again, I'm not going to push these all the way in because they're not staying in. It's just to give you an idea of how the tool works. So to get it out, obviously that has to sit this side. There are holes to bolt it on, so it's in position, but you don't need to do that to be honest. Um, so we'll put that over that. We'll get the right sleeve for the size of the bearing, which is that one. So that's sitting over the bearing. Put that through. Put that on the back. Put one of those on. Put your nuts on. Before we start tightening, make sure it's sitting properly, which it is. And then just tighten it up again. And the bearing will pull out. And there it is, guys. Really simple. Really useful if you're doing. Um, one of the five speed gearboxes and you realise you need to put a chin between there and the casing because it just means you can take the bearing in and out in and out to your heart's content until you've got the tolerances right with the right shim so that's the bearings into the case, so I'll put that down. Now the bearings into the end plate. Oh the joys, these are never easy to get in. So that sits in there, that sits over the top of that, exactly the same principle again, that goes through there. This time you probably don't want to so get one of those that fits nicely over the sensor, like so. It isn't going to matter that it's the raised bit, because that bit doesn't turn because of the bearing. 
so you can wind that onto there. That's smacking the sensor, that's smacking the sensor, and again. Just tighten the knot. This one is a bit harder, but still does in look. So that's started to go in. As I say, I'm not going to wind these all the way in, but that's started to go in. I will do it. Show you how to extract with it because that'd be the same principle again. That bearing's definitely started to go in, it's going in nice and flat. What I've used for this is a <coughs> is an engine cone. So put that together again. Tighten this in and it should fall through. Like so. so far it had gone in so far uh, right same goes for the um, same goes for the other rice uh, put it in the right way around you moron no, it's that way come on get your head together you've got the same with this rice put that in there get the smallest one put that in there Use whichever one if it fits in there, which is that one. Nut on, and just wind it in, and that will pull that rice in as well. So I'm not going to pull in because all these are brand new parts, and I don't want to ruin them. Um, you can also use it on the mag. Um, You don't really need to because if you heat these mags up enough, they just drop in. Uh, I'll go and get some oh, to the driver. But while I'm at it, this is on the GT mags. I'll show you the best way to put the bearing in. You can use this, but you don't really need to. But I'll show you the score. You want to take this red part off first. Dry cough, oh my god. Does that mean I'm doomed? Anyway, underneath that, there's an O ring there. Obviously, you don't want to heat the mag up with the O ring, because a lot of these you'll melt it. So, if you take all that out, take that out and put that back in again. You haven't got to whack it up just as long as it's resting in in its position. So that's tightened back up. So now the O-ring's not in there so it won't get damaged. There's no oil tools in it either so they won't get damaged. Then if you take the 
circuit plate the other side and then just literally heat this up until it's cooking and then if you get it hot enough that will literally just drop straight in but if you don't want to drop it in or if it gets wedged halfway down we can use this I need the one that's the right size which is that one so it pulls all the way through and then that on that side that through the bearing that into there now this moves around on there look because that isn't as large as that but if you don't want it to you can put the sleeve on fiddly then put it on hmm. then put the nuts on and tight get that as much in the center as you can So it's even, and then just wind it in, and the bearing will go in. Um, like I say, though, you don't need to do that. You can heat these up hot enough for them to drop in without damaging anything. Uh, also, I've only just nipped that up with my hands, and it's already started to pull that bearing in, which is a bit annoying because I've got to get it back out again. But it will give me a chance to show you. What else you can do with these, if you've got one of these mags, not with a normal mag, you can take this out. If you're not butter fingered. Take that out, and then you can drop that in there. Take your sleeve on to keep it centralised. You don't need to do, but that makes sense. Then hold it in with your hand, then put that on the outside. Put that through. Screw that in. Can you imagine if the bearing was all the way in, in, you'd be on it by now and you'd start to wind it to push the bearing out. Whereas this is only just nipped in. Try and get it as central as you can on this side. It's out. simple. That's only possible though if you've got one of those magazines. Let's just put that back together again. And obviously, when if you have got one of these and you're building it up obviously once the bearings in and up against the back of that you take that back out again once it's cooled down rest the o-ring into there oil seal into that obviously once that's out and then one them back down again Let's see.
all those parts are available in the shop. And obviously, your bearing would be in there. Oil soil in, and then that in. That's the mag. Um, I think that's everything. So, very versatile tool. 